I'm Myra Cassidy. This is Myra Cassidy Speaks, bringing you your journey, your story. And today we're in Indianapolis talking to an amazing singer, Catrice Young. How are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing good. good. So Catrice, tell us a little bit about your story, your musical journey. Were you born to sing? How'd you get started? I honestly feel like I was born to sing. I feel like um, at a very young age, I recognized my musical talent. Um, I used to travel with my dad when he would go and rehearse with his band, and I just always know that I was moved by the music that they played, and I always wanted to go to his rehearsals because I loved the way that music made me feel. But I was about eight years old when I was sitting in the back of my parents' um, station wagon mm -hmm. singing, and I kind of remember going, oh, that sounds pretty good. I think I want to do more of that and I haven't stopped since. So tell me, what was your first performance? Do you remember when your first performance was? I do. Um, I think the very first time I was on stage is with, was with the All City Jazz Band. So when I was in high school, um, there was an, the All City Jazz Band was looking for a vocalist. Okay. And my vocal instructor had me audition. And I'd never been on stage before. Um, I didn't know what being on stage looked like or what it felt like. Um, when I look back at that video, you can kind of see me looking around at all of the lights because I had never been on stage in that capacity before. Right. But I was singing Lena Horne's Stormy Weather mm -hmm. with a live band. And I remember looking out to the audience and going, I can't see anybody. It was just that first experience of being on stage. But what I remember most of all is how it made me feel and how the just being able to present a song and have people appreciate it and have the audience applaud. I remember that feeling and it's quite frankly like a drug mm -hmm. that you never can get enough of. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So how would you describe um, your range mm -hmm. or your style? I know it's more mm -hmm. neo soul, but you're classically trained. Mm -hmm. So how does that mm -hmm. work? So when I was in choir, I could sing anything from alto to first soprano. So I would say that I have a large range. Um, as I've gotten older, my voice has deepened a okay. bit. So that take comes into play, but I can still do the first soprano stuff. Um, my style, you know, I think I am more soulful. Okay. However, I love singing anything. I don't care if it's rock and roll, if it's classical, I wanna do it all. So at what point did you decide to turn you're singing into a business where you're getting revenue, where you're putting on concerts and performances. Well, as you know, in Indianapolis, there are several performing venues. And what I found myself doing was trying to get into these venues mm -hmm. and being told, oh, you haven't put in enough time. You're not here enough. You Basically, they wanted me to become a groupie just to perform on their stage. And I thought, I don't want to become a groupie. Mm -hmm. I just want to sing. And so that's kind of when I decided do your own concert. You don't need someone to give you permission to be on stage. There's stages all around. And so it really wasn't, um, my, my motivation was not revenue to begin with. It was just, I just wanted to sing. And there were so many roadblocks. And and in some of these venues, they made it about so many other things, like who you knew, who how popular you were, and that type of thing. I just wanted to sing. So I decided, let me rent a venue and tell people about it. And that first time, over 700 people showed up to support with wow. barely any marketing. We just kind of word of mouth and wow. that many people showed up. And it was so wonderful and so fulfilling. I just decided to keep doing it. But it was never for the money. It was always for the art. The love of singing. Yes. Now, you're also a vocal coach. I am. Okay. Yes. And how do you pick the clientele? Or do, you, do you pick clients? How does that work? So clients usually pick me. Okay. Um, I advertise a bit. I have a website, which is www.catrice.com. Okay. And they can go on and kind of see some of my work there. Um, and they'll call me and they'll say, you know, I'm interested in taking vocal lessons. I'll have them come in. Um, they will, you know, sing for me and I'll kind of see where they are in the, you know, with their voice and try to find out what their goals are. I'm always honest. Um, okay. you know, if, if they ask me a question, I give them an honest answer because everybody that comes to me is not a great vocalist. Some people are okay singers. Some of them are really good singers. And some of them not very good, but my goal is to help them to reach their goals. So if they just want to learn how to 
hold notes better, how to breathe better. You don't have to sound beautiful to do that. So I meet each student where they are. And like I said, work one-on-one -on -one with them to help them meet their goals. Wow, okay. And with your singing mm -hmm. and with all that you've done over the years, what has been the hardest challenge about putting together a show or the jitters? What What is the backstage feel? Oh my goodness, that's a good question. As I've gotten older, my nerves get the best of me now. Where it used to be when I was younger, I would get nervous. And I, I think nerves is a good thing, but it's not a good thing when it hinders you. But sometimes with age, I don't know what happens. Your anxiety levels go up. And so the backstage jitters are a very real thing. I kind of find myself going, what in the world are we doing? Right. You know, but what I love and what I've always found is no matter how strong that feeling is, and it's gotten stronger, like I said, over the years, the moment I step on stage, it's, it all goes away. It all changes. It feels like I'm standing in the place that I was born to be in. Amazing. And how do you find your band or other people to collaborate with? Who are some of the other talents you collaborate with? Um, gosh, so many. Um, I started out with a band called Blue Soul, um, which consisted of Vincent Howard and Michael Hogan. And, and that band kind of evolved over time with different band members. Um, but Vincent Howard moved to Florida. He was my band director. So this time I started asking around. I no longer had Blue Soul because they no longer existed. Okay. So I started asking around and I was able to find a band called Seven Four West um, out of Ohio. And um, they, I worked with those guys. Um, um, let's see, it was uh, Martel Richardson and um, Baki. Mm -hmm. um, he was the band director. Um, then I you know, called an old trusted friend, Bruce Benton, okay. um, Daryl Green, um, and Sissy Anderson, and we just all collaborated, not to mention Albert and Aaron Townsend. Okay. We all collaborated, and what we were able to present this beautiful, beautiful show to our friends and family. <laughs> Go ahead, tell me what, how they can get in contact with you. So they can reach out to me, like I said, um, through my website, which is www.catrece.com. Um, they can call me, 317-518-4763. And either one of those ways, leave me a message or shoot me an email, and I'll be sure to get back in touch with you. Wonderful. Well, thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk Absolutely. with you today and learn more about all that you do here in the city. And I'm Myra Cassidy. You're watching Myra Cassidy Speaks. Be sure to check out the website, MyraCassidy.com, and allow us to share your story and your journey. Have a good one.